Hello, this is McD the Beast, and this is McD Sports 4 coming to you today with my recap of NFL Week 14, 2019. Before I continue, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Please subscribe to your channel. Greatly appreciate if you do that. I do have a subscriber goal of 250 subscribers, which I'll love to hit by the end of the year. Just go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Uh, you will not regret it. Also, share the video if you can't help the YouTube and Licks. Um, I usually come through with a 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. game recaps, but um, because of the fact YouTube's not allowing me to live stream for some reason, I really don't know why. Uh, I don't have any copyright strikes or anything. Um, and I'm going to have to call YouTube sometime this week. Uh, I'm going to have to do it this way. Um, I thought about crashing in about my Titans winning. I am a Tennessee Titans fan, but um, I just didn't have the energy to do it, and I was too busy with other things. Um, at this time, well, let me not say I didn't have the energy to do it. I just had too much to do, and I already spent all my energy once so I realized we were going to win the game in the fourth quarter. Um, by the time the game was over, I kind of all that energy kind of went. But anyways, let's we'll start off with Thursday night. Uh, Dallas versus Chicago. The Cowboys versus the Bears. Bears won 31-24. Uh, th my feelings about this game: I think Jason Garrett is going to be out of a job after the end of the season. Good win by Chicago as they try to stay in that playoff race is going to be really tough because the NFC the NFC is just really deep more than anything. Um, I mean, you're going to have probably 9-7, and 10-6 and six teams not making the playoffs. So, good win by the Bears to keep their hopes alive. Cowboys, luckily they're in the NFC East, the one division that sucks absolutely. So, you got that going for you if you're the Cowboys. So, Jason Garrett will be go gone at the end of the season. That was the most unprepared team I've ever seen. In a while, I mean, the Cowboys made 31-24. It was not a 31-24 game. Start off with the Sunday games. We'll start off with the one in Atlanta. Panthers, Falcons, Falcons, they won 40-20. to And let me give credit to Dan Quinn. I know I've been calling for his job earlier this season. This seems really tough for him. I mean, they went out and doubled up the Panthers 40-20. to That's pretty good. I know Panthers are winning out interim head coach. It's basically... They're big. I think they're kind of just playing for a draft pick at this point. I think they're just going to tank these final few games. But give the Falcons credit. I mean, they still have a shot to not come in last in that NFC South. So give them credit. Um, Falcons, good win for them. Panthers, I think they're just tanking for a spot at this point. Your 1 o'clock game right here, one of your two big 1 o'clock games. Uh, Ravens, they beat the Bills 24-17. Lamar Jackson, not his best game, but he got the job done when needed. This Ravens defense came through. The refs were awful this game, especially for the Ravens. That was a really bad pass interference call there at the end if you were watching the game. That ball was clearly uncatchable. And I, I don't even think the uh, the cornerback really did anything to cause Cole Beasley to fall. I think he just loved tapping with Cole Be Beasley. He just flopped. Um, and there was also a, in the second quarter, there was a roughing the pass penalty, which could have been a fumble, um, honestly, but it wasn't, it was an incomplete pass in my opinion, but there's no way that's roughing the pass was there as well. I thought the rest were terrible today in this game. Uh, but nevertheless, the Ravens, big play by Marcus Peters at the end there, bailed them out 24-17, your final score. Josh Allen, you can tell he still needs to approve some. The Bills in general need to still approve some, but, the Ravens, they look like the best team in the NFL or one of the top two teams in the NFL. I'm going to talk about the other top team in the NFL here here in a second. But Ravens got the job done 24-17 over the Bills. Um, Bills, they'll be in the playoffs. They just still got to do some work. Bengals, Browns. Browns got the win 27-19. Bengals played them tough in this game, but at the end, the Browns are just the better team talent-wise. I think that's where it came down to. Browns are hoping they still have a shot in the playoffs. I mean, it's a two-game – I mean – for that sixth seed, it's going to be between Pittsburgh and Tennessee because every other team is at least two teams back. But the Browns, they went ahead and got the win there, 27-19. Good win for the Browns. Bengals will try and get that first overall pick. It's going to be a question between Joe Burrow and Chase Young. I know I've been saying you'll be a fool to pass up on Chase Young. I can understand why you draft Joe Burrow at this time. Next game, Redskins Packers. That one kid guy, I forget his name. His name escapes me. He made a hell of a grab for the Redskins to make this game interesting in the end zone. But the Packers just looked like the better team. They won the game 20 to 15. Packers, I mean, at this point, they're trying to position themselves for playoff seeding. 
They kind of maybe even look, overlooked this one a little bit. The Redskins are playing tough ever since they started uh, Dwayne Haskins um, into the starting lineup. So give them credit there. But overall, the Packers, um, they I think they kind of overlooked the Redskins a little bit, but still got the win. Next game, Lions, Vikings. Vikings got the win 20 to 7. Basically, what I expected in this game, I thought the Vikings would maybe have a bit of a slow game right here. Um, but they're up with the win because the Detroit Lions were terrible. Matt Patricia has to go, in my opinion. I think he's not a good head coach. Vikings, they went ahead and got the win 20 to 7. A pretty boring game. It was the first game to end today. Um, so the Vikings, in my opinion, um, there's just positioning themselves as well. They still have a shot in that NFC North against the Packers. Niners Saints, game of the year right here. Back and forth game, but at the end, the Niners with a walk-off field goal, 30 yards right down the uplights. Hell of a game. Big big play call right there, fourth and two, George Kittle. If the guy made the tackle, uh, it would have been, I think, a four-yard gain, so it would have still been the first down, but Joe, but missed tackle, ran down the field 30 yards, and a face max penalty add on that. Set the Niners up 30-yard field goal. Tough loss for the Saints at home. It really is. I still, But the Saints, they locked up the division. They'll be in the playoffs. Niners and Seahawks are going at. Niners actually just jumped back into first place because the Seahawks lost more than that here in a minute, but... Good win for the Niners on the road. I knew they were going to win one of these two on the road, either against the Ravens or against the Saints. I thought they would win the game against the Saints because I was not sold on the Saints' offense these past few years. Uh, well, not a few years, these few weeks. So I thought that could have um, potentially not been good if you are a uh, Saints fan. But, hey, this was a shootout. Defense is going to show out 48-46 was your final. Saints went for two, failed. Drew Brees kind of. Lost his balance, couldn't really put much in that throw. It happens. Um, but the Saints will be fine. They're still definitely compete for a Super Bowl. Next game, Dolphins, Jets, just running on a last second field goal as well against the Dolphins, 22 21. Didn't watch any of this one. Um, I'll admit that. I couldn't really find it, to be honest with you. Um, but the Jets, good win for them at home. They tried to at least stay a competitive team. You got the Ravens at home. And the, the Ravens on the road, I believe, this upcoming Thursday night. That's going to be a really tall tax uh, for them. I'm just telling you that right now. Dolphins are a competitive team. They're playing tough for Brian Forrest. I've been saying that all season, basically. And um, they, just, they, just, they just don't have the talent. They're going to build through the draft these next few years. It's going to be a wet few years. But this team's playing tough, the Dolphins. They could have probably easily won this one against the Jets. So a good win for the Jets at home. Dolphins are trying to figure out a lot of things. Next game. Uh, Colts Bucks. Uh, Bucks won 38 35. I would have been a bit more concerned for the Bucks. Um, if Payne Manning, uh, was at the helm down there for the Colts down there in Tampa. But, um, at the end, I just think the Bucks are a better team than the Colts. I really do. The Colts, I mean, they kind no T.Y. Hilton. Um, they, they're kind of running it. I mean, they're kind of banged up. So, I mean, they play tough in this one, but at the end, uh, Bucks made a good comeback with Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston is either one drive, he's running a touchdown, another drive, an interception. It's just how where he is. If you're a team, I don't know if the Bucks are really going to do with him. I don't know what they're going to do. Sign him to an extension. Let him go. But if they do uh, sign him to an extension, if you're a Bucks fan, you just got to deal with it. He's just going to turn with the ball a lot, but he's also going to make a lot of spectacular plays. Uh, so that you got that going for you if you're the Bucks. The Colts is a tough loss. Probably pitch out playoff competition at this point. Two games behind, three games left to go. Uh, especially since the Titans are ahead of you, um, you split with them. Um, the Texans as well. They're eight and five, so it's going to be a tough head road ahead for the Colts if they even want to make the playoffs. Um, but we'll see what they do. Next game, Broncos, uh, Texans. I, as a Tennessee Titans fan, I would like to thank the Denver Broncos for being the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans, once again, I mean, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about the Houston Texans. I mean, they're just a bit too inconsistent for you. They're not, I, I still don't think they're that good of a team outside of a few players. In the show today, they were down 38 to 3 at one point. Those three touchdowns the Texans scored were in garbage time as far as I'm concerned. Um, as I said, DeAndre Hopkins, I, I wish he would demand a trade out of Houston. I, I mean, Deshaun Ross, I feel bad for him, but they're going to offer him a shit ton of money. And I just feel like he can't decline that. 
It's very tough if you're a Houston Texas fan because I just don't think you're good enough to go up against the big boys like the Ravens, uh, the Patriots, and the Chiefs. More in the Patriots and Chiefs here in a second. And you have teams like the Tennessee Titans and usually the Indianapolis Colts on your ass every year. So it's tough if you're the Texans. Good win for the Broncos, though. They're, at, they're a veteran team, I said, at the beginning of the season. They're going to pull off two or three upsets this season that you don't see coming. And they're going to beat all the bad teams in the AFC that they end up facing. I mean, I always, whenever I see a veteran team, I always think they're not going to be that bad because those veterans have pride, and they're not going to let the pride go 4-12. and 12. So, Broncos, good win for them on the road. Drew, this Drew Locke, as I say, he can sling the you-know-what out of the ball. So, you got that going for you if you're a Broncos fan. I do think he's the quarterback of the future. I say it was a good draft pick. Just give him time. Uh, now we go to a 4 o'clock game. It's the 1-4 or 5 game. Chargers versus Jaguars. Chargers absolutely dominated the Jaguars. The LA Chokers, they didn't choke away any games. They actually showed up for once. Got the win 45 to 10. Doug Monroe, Doug Monroe might be out of a job tomorrow. I'm dead serious when I say this. It is bad in Jacksonville. Um, it really is. Um, good win for the Chargers, though. I still think the Chargers are talented enough. Maybe not this season, but next season, even though I do think Phil Rivers is declining. They might make one more shot at the playoffs, but outside of that, I mean, it's kind of done for Phil Rivers. But the chart, but the uh, Jaguars, Nick Foles looks like a race of money. Garmin Minshew, he's okay. I thought he benefited some from Mike Leach up there at Washington State when he was in college football because Mike Leach, he's a hell of an offensive mind. But I just feel like the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars are an absolute shit show. They're not that good. And... They, they might be one of the worst teams in the NFL in the foreseeable future, especially if they can't develop ministry correctly. Next game, my Tennessee Titans went to Oakland and got the win, like I said they were our week, 42-21. Actually, a bit a bit bigger of a margin than what I thought it was going to be. Um, great win for my Tennessee Titans on the road. We needed this one, especially with the Texans losing at, during the 1 o'clock slate. Um I really feel like this is a big win for us. Unfortunately, the Texans do still have the division lead right now because they have a one because they have a one game lead in the division. The good news is that we have not faced the Texans yet. We face them next week and in week 17. We get the Saints in week 16. I forget who the Texans get in week in week 16, but if we could win now, I, we're definitely winning this division. Even if we win two out of three. Um, I don't trust the Steelers. I think the Bills, if the, we need the Bills to go into Pittsburgh and beat them um, next week. If the Bills could beat Pittsburgh, if we could go ahead and beat the Texans, that would be great because that means we will have the lead um, in the uh, for the wild card for that sixth seed over the Pittsburgh Steelers by a game. Um, and if we could beat the Texans both times, we could go ahead and win this division. Raiders, they're a young team. Uh, they're definitely growing something there, but it's just I think th they had a chance to go seven and four. They got blown out by the Jets, got blown out by the Chiefs, got blown out by the Titans. They're just a young team. I mean, they're growing. I wouldn't be too concerned if I'm a Raiders fan. Chiefs versus Patriots. Uh, before I continue about this, the Patriots got hosed by the refs on that touchdown. Let me tell you something. That was a touchdown right there when the guy dived in. Um. I forget who it was who dove in, but clearly a touchdown. I cannot believe that was not called a touchdown. Um, but the Chiefs, they won 23-16. That's a terrible call right there by the rest. I cannot say that enough. Great win for the Chiefs on the road in Arrowhead. They seem to have the Patriots number. Maybe not so much by beating them because this is the first time at home beat the Patriots. But they went up there with Alex Smith a few years ago in week one on Thursday night and beat them. I mean, Andy Reid seems to have Belichick's number. I mean, they, every game between these two seems to be close. Um, and it's a big win for the Chiefs because it kind of just basically secures the division for them. If they lose this game, it's possible that the Raiders um, could maybe have hope. But at the end of the day, Chiefs got the win, 23-16. And the Chiefs, um, they basically secured the, the division at this point. I don't know if they locked it up, but... It's basically the Chiefs division. They won the AFC West. Patriots, um, you guys do have concerns offensively. 
Maybe not so much defensively, but you guys do have concerns offensively. You don't have enough weapons. I think the I personally think that the Ravens can go up there and beat you. And I think the Chiefs can go up there and beat you. And I give the Tunnies a shot to go up there and beat you the way they're playing right now as well. So that's my fear about the Patriots right now. Um and you could say I'm homing about the Titans, that's fine, but I don't even think the Chiefs and Ravens can, can go up there and beat you guys in Foxborough. So we'll see what happens, but the, the Patriots, they have offensive concerns because they do not have enough weapons around Tom Brady. And then your your last game here at 425, Pittsburgh Steelers, they beat the Arizona Cardinals 23-17. Good win for the Steelers. A lot of people are picking the Cardinals to win this one. Didn't happen. Um... And the Pittsburgh Steelers behind a home crowd. Yes, I said it. I know the game was in Arizona. There were a lot of terrible tires out there in Arizona. And let me tell you, um, there was a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers fans in that crowd. Um, they got the win over the Cardinals. The Cardinals, they, they played kind of sloppy in this one. I, I caught some of this game. They played kind of sloppy. It happens. I mean, the Cardinals are a young team on, on the rise. They're going to kind of uh, let Larry Fitzgerald run right into the sunset. They have a young co rookie quarterback, Kyle Murray, who I actually think is having a decent year, but he struggled with some in this game. And listen, Mike Tom, when he's the coach of the year, outside of Kyle Shanahan and John Harbaugh, outside of those two, I think Mike Tom has to be considered for the coach of the year. Um, it, it's and Mike Mar and not Mike Milwaukee. Gosh. Hate him, um, Mike Rabel. He's another guy. I mean, these are coaches that should be considered coach of the year. Um, they're really doing some special things there with their teams. Also, Sean McDermott up in Buffalo as well. Um, but the Steelers are right. I mean, they're right there. They're right there to get that sixth seed and the wild card, and maybe even the fifth seed. If they could be Buffalo. And then your Sunday night football game that ended not too long ago, Seahawks Rams. Rams got won this game 28 to 12. Seahawks looked a bit flat. Um, I'll admit that. I watched this whole game. They looked a bit flat. Uh, good win for the Rams as they try to stay in the NFC playoff picture, even though I think at the end they're going to be bounced out. 49ers, they go back in first place because uh, the Seahawks were in first place coming into this game. Um, but they, uh, since they lost, they lost to the Rams. Um, not the uh, Niners are back in first place with their win today, and basically, I mean, the Rams they look like the better team. I thought um, Sean McVay called a good game. Seahawks, I mean, they, they just look a bit flat. It happens, but costly game because trust me, between the Niners and Seahawks, you want that home field advantage. So that's basically your Sunday games. Also include the Thursday night game. Your Monday night football game is Giants Eagles. Eli Manning is getting the start. Interesting to see how he plays. But overall, it was a good uh, Sunday of football. Comment down below. Tell me what you think about these games. Always like hearing from you all. Thanks for watching. And this is McD the Beast here signing off. We'll have the Army Navy preview out tomorrow.